Hi guys, today I'm going to talk a little bit about the differences between the various HBA controllers that you see in front of you. I have an eBay store called The Art of Server where I sell uh, these HBA IT mode controllers that are pre-flashed to the proper firmware. For people who are building uh, servers with ZFS or FreeNAS uh, or using Unraid or some other software array technology, these are the type of controllers that you need. And one of the most frequent questions I get from potential buyers on eBay is that, you know, you got you have so many different varieties of uh, HBA IT mode controllers, which one uh, should I get? And so I have here kind of a, a collection of the different cards that I have uh, listed in my eBay store. And I want to talk a little bit about them and kind of go over them. And so uh, to start with, well, talk about the ones here on the left. These are the LSI SAS 2008 uh, chipset-based controllers. They're an older generation, and they're PCI 2.0 with eight lanes. And so that gives you about four gigabytes per second of bandwidth from the controller to your host system. They use these connectors here called SSF8087 uh, ports, and there's two of them on each of these cards. Of course, you, you can find cards with uh, a different variety of uh, number of ports. There are single ports and up to four ports, I think. And maybe in some uh, more uh, obscure versions, there might be even more ports, uh, although they're not very common. And anyway, each of those SFF8087 ports carries four SAS lanes. And so in these dual port uh, varieties, that means there's eight SAS lanes. And these cards support up to SATA 3 or SAS 2, which gives you about 6 gigabits per second. And that equates to about 750 megabytes per second on each of those SAS lanes. So if you were to do the math for the eight SAS lanes on these two ports, uh, that gives you a total of six gigabytes per second of total theoretical bandwidth from your connected storage devices. And <clears throat> of course you can immediately tell that the six gigabytes per second is greater than four gigabytes per second. And so the these particular controllers don't have the bandwidth from the controller to the, the motherboard. Uh, to handle that full capacity. But in a lot of cases, that might not actually matter at all. And in particular, if you're using spinning hard drives, which in most ideal conditions uh, probably max out at about 250 megabytes per second, even with the modern, uh, say, 12 terabyte hard drives that are very, very dense, you're only going to get about 250 megabytes per second uh, out of that hard drive. And so uh, considering that if you have eight lanes, say eight hard drives connected here, you're really only talking about at most about two gigabytes per second. And so the four gigabytes per second on that uh, eight lane PCIe bus is going to be more than adequate to handle uh, spinning hard drives connected to these controllers. And so these controllers are, they're older, but they're perfectly adequate for uh, handling uh, a disk array of, of traditional hard drives. If you wanted to use, use SSDs, you could. And if you just had a few of them, it probably would be just fine. But if you wanted to build an entire um, disk array with SSDs, then this might not be the, the right choice. And <clears throat> so that brings us to what's in the middle here. This is the LSI SAS 2308 uh, chipset based controller. And the main difference between this one and the 2008 chipset is that this supports PCIe 3.0. And so with PCIe 3.0 uh, at eight lanes, that gives you roughly about 7.8 gigabytes per second. And so everything else uh, between these cards are uh, pretty much the same except for the PCIe 3.0. And so you can see that the 7.8 gigabyte bandwidth from the controller to your motherboard uh, is uh, enough to handle all eight SAS lanes running at uh, their full capacity. 
And so if you wanted to use SSDs, and a lot of them, you know, this might be the control that you uh, really want to get. But if you're just using hard drives and you don't see yourself building a whole array of SSDs, then, you know, save yourself some money and get something based on the 2008 chipset. And so finally, that brings us to these guys here on the right. The These are based on the LSI uh, 3008 uh, chipset, which is a, is a newer one, and well, except this last one here. This is a slight, uh, slightly different one. But these are uh, PCIe 3.0, eight lanes, and so that gives you again 7.8 gigabytes per second. But they're using uh, these ports here that are called SFF 8643 ports, and they're a little bit similar to these, except that the physical form factor is different. But electrically, they're they're uh, more or less the same. Uh, but these these cards uh, with the 3008 chipset and, and this one here, which is an HP uh, H240, uh, which is uh, a custom chipset, not an LSI one, uh, support the SAS 3 protocol, which gives you 12 gigabits per second, uh, which equates to roughly 1.5 gigabytes per second uh, for each SAS lane. And again, because there are 12 SAS lanes here, we're talking about a total SAS bandwidth uh, theoretical about uh, 12 gigabytes per second so uh, immediately you'll, you can tell that you know if you were to fully utilize all 12 uh, all eight uh, SAS lanes at their full 1.5 gigabytes per second you're really still going to be bottlenecked at the PCI bus here which will only handle about 7.8 gigabytes and so these cards are great if you really intend to use uh, SAS 3 SSDs and you really intend to uh, make use of that, you know, close to the 1.5 gigabytes per second, uh, even though, you know, you'll probably max out at 7.8 gigabytes on the PCI bus here. And so I would only recommend buying the these 12 gigabit per second SAS 3 cards if you really intend to buy uh, some uh, SAS 3 SSDs and, and plan to build some sort of disk array with them. Uh, otherwise, there's really kind of no reason to spend the extra money on on these cards. And so, anyway, so that hopefully that gives you an idea of how to pick uh, one of these HBAs or or similars if you see uh, some elsewhere. Um, in addition, I'll, I'll also talk a little bit about some of the peculiarities of these cards. The, over here on the uh, 2008, um, you'll see this up here is a 9201-8i. And this is a 9211-8i, and this is the card that gets mentioned a lot online in terms of, you know, if you're getting a SAS 2008-based um, HBA uh, IT mode controller. Uh, these two essentially look identical except for one thing, and that's this chip right here. And that's, a, I believe, an NVRAM chip that is used when you're using these cards with the IR uh, RAID firmware. And so because these are all flash to IT mode firmware, that chip actually doesn't really matter at all. And so functionally, these two cards are actually identical, and it doesn't really matter which one you get if you're planning to use IT mode firmware. And so anyway, just you know, keep your minds open. If you're looking for a 9211, oh no, keep your mind open for a 9201 and, and see what you can find. Uh, because those will essentially be completely identical. Now, the bottom card here is a Dell H310 that's also been flashed to IT mode firmware, and it's using the the same exact firmware these cards are using. It's a, the, well currently the P20 uh, LSI IT mode firmware, and this is uh, based on chi same chipset, but it's Dell's own design, so it's a little bit different. And you know, some people claim that this card actually runs a little bit cooler. And so one of the differences you might notice is that the, the heat sink here uh, is a little bit smaller on the LSI ones versus the Dell ones. You can't really see it uh, from this perspective, but it's actually also a little bit taller. Um, so overall, it's, it's just a bigger heat sink. Uh, so that you know might aid in a little bit uh, more in, in cooling if you're in a, in a box that has um, uh, less airflow and whatnot. You might want to consider this one. And then the other subtle thing that's a little bit different that um, I don't think people really notice too much is that these FFF uh, 8087 ports are a little bit inset here, so they're kind of a little bit further back. 
and whereas the the Dell ones are kind of closer to the edge and uh, and I can tell you from my own experience because I, I test all these cards and I'm plugging and unplugging cables all the time to make sure that all these SAS lanes are working uh, when having them near the edge is actually a lot easier to to deal with and so you know that's a subtle difference you know most people won't be unplugging and plugging cables all a lot like I do but um, but that is one thing I do notice that uh, I, I quite like about the the Dell H310 card. And, and interestingly, if you look at the uh, kind of the next generation of uh, in the 2308 chipset here, is that uh, LSI made a, a cutout here. So m maybe, you know, somebody uh, noticed that um, and kind of changed the design a little bit. So anyway, those are the subtle designs about the, uh, the different variety of uh, 2008. Um, chipset-based HPA controllers. And then finally, uh, let me talk, there's not a lot to talk about. This is actually an HP H220, and so it's equivalent here uh, in the middle here on the 2308. Uh, that's equivalent to a 9205-8i or a 9207-8i. And you'll find, you know, a, a variety of cards that are, are very similar, but you know, other than the HP logo, this really looks identical to kind of a, a uh, an original LSI card. So I think it's just there's no redesign it's or custom design. It's really just kind of a relabeled card. And then over here on the uh, the 3008, um, you know, this is a Dell H3 uh, 330, and this is an IBM or Lenovo Servraid uh, M1215. And so these are all based on the 3008 chipset. Uh, the only thing to n notably different is really the orientation of the connectors. And so this kind of goes out the the rear here, and this kind of has a vertical um, uh, a vertical uh, connector. So depending on your chassis and, and how things are oriented and, and where the cables are running, uh, you know, one of these might be more beneficial. I find that on like small like 2U servers. Having the connector out the rear is, is a lot easier to run the cables, and in some uh, like for you or maybe a desktop type of machine, uh, having them vertically uh, sometimes is a benefit. So just keep that in mind if you are deciding to go with one of these. You know, uh, think about how you want to run the cables, and, and that might help you make a decision on, on how um, which card you want, you might want to get. Now the the oddball one here is the uh, HP H240. This is uh, an interesting card uh, in in a lot of different ways. One, it's using the same connector as these two uh, older cards use the SSF um, 8087, and but it still supports uh, 12 gigabits. Uh, and I've I've tested these things out, so I I know that. Um, and it's uh, I believe. Uh, from what I've read, this is actually a micro semi chipset, but it's uh, um, kind of a, a custom one for HP and with HP's firmware and whatnot. This card is supposed to be supposedly very high performing, uh, but it requires uh, HP's driver. Uh, it's called HPSA in the Linux world, and it's a, it's a very nice card. Um, I, I use it in some of my servers. I really like it, but I would only recommend it really for people who are using Linux and maybe like uh, ZFS on Linux. Uh, I'm not really sure how how good the support is, uh, the driver support is for uh, free BSD based uh, things like FreeNAS and whatnot. And, and also, it's probably a little bit rare. So even if there was driver support uh, officially, uh, when if you go to the forums asking for help and you tell people, "Hey, I've got this." Uh, H240, you know, it's a little bit rare, so you're probably not going to find a lot of people who will know a whole lot about it. Uh, one interesting thing to note about uh, some of these cards is that even with their uh, RAID firmware, like the H240, there's actually no separate IT mode firmware. It's just uh, one version of the firmware, and there's a mode you can change uh, to make it uh, a RAID card versus an HBA uh, IT mode card, and so the ones that I sell on my eBay store are already uh, pre-configured for to uh, to work as an HBA IT mode controller. And uh, same thing goes for the Dell H330. Uh, there's a setting if you get into the the BIOS of the card uh, to switch it to an HBA card versus uh, a RAID card. 
so anyway that's a little bit about all these different cards um, again to just kind of uh, recap if you're using just traditional hard drives go with the SAS 2008 if you're planning to use some SSDs you know uh, like uh, SATA 3 SSDs or, or basically 6 qubit uh, SSDs you know consider the 2308 you know um, and if you're if you're really considering a, a SAS 3 SSD and and plan to you know find stuff that will go near a gigabyte per second, and and have a whole bunch of them, uh, then consider some of the uh, the LSI three thousand eight or or something like the HP H two forty, but only probably if you're using Linux. So anyway, hopefully that helps you guys uh, decide on what's best for you and what in terms of what you need and what you're trying to build. And of course, you know, all these cards and, and maybe some other ones I, I forget uh, are available for sale at my eBay store. And I'll leave a link down in the description there. So if you're interested, uh, please come by my eBay store and check out what I've got. And of course, if you have any other questions, uh, feel free to contact me. I'm happy to uh, help you out. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye bye.